talking to you guys. I made it to New York. Whew, almost missed my bus. I'm seeing Phantom of the Opera today. I feel awkward filming in public, so... <laughs> oh, and I'm at the Barnes & Noble in um, Fifth Avenue, because the three-story one. It's, uh, I love it here. I'm gonna just hang out here before the show, because I gotta leave. head there in about an hour, so... Hmm. <laughs> couple days later it's now friday i was in new york on a wednesday am i wearing the same sweater i'm wearing the same sweater aren't i okay yeah we're just gonna have to deal with that um but but yeah i am very bad at vlogging clearly um i have no idea where all the filming is i'm gonna have an interesting time editing this i may just insert clips of me talking in here with clips of from new york but yeah i'm really happy that i saw the show um I'm having trouble gathering my thoughts now. Um, I would have probably talked a little more during the show, especially during intermission, but uh, there's this guy sitting next to me, uh, Marco. Uh, he and I were just like talking about the show and how much we love Phantom. So how dare you, Marco, be such a wonderful person to talk to because you distracted me from filming my video thing. <laughs> uh, but... Anyway, it was worth it. I, I was so tired the next day because I just went to New York for the day. I had to get, and I got back at like midnight. So I was tired and I had work the next day. But, because you know, because you got to work because I need money to do things. Like see Broadway shows <laughs> and buy books. So yeah, that's, that's how that went. Oh, and before I forget, um, I, I, there are clips you saw that of me at Barnes & Noble. I just want to show you guys what I got there. So... I got, I get geese. I got uh, the script for the for Into the Woods. It's the libretto. It doesn't have any music, but it has like the whole script, like the lyrics for the songs and all the dialogue. And same thing with Sweeney Todd. Ah, like I'm not kidding. These are two of my like all time favorite musicals. Like if I had to rank my favorite musicals, they'd probably be in the top five. Um, because, you know, Sondheim's a genius. I love, if I had to choose between the two, I'd say Into the Woods. I love Into the Woods. I'm a sucker for fairy tale retellings, hence why Once Upon a Time is one of my all-time favorite TV shows. And, like, this is, like, the perfect Halloween musical. I did Sweeney Todd my um, junior year of high school. I was in the ensemble. And, you know, I would love to do that show again so badly. Like... Actually, either of these shows, if anyone's casting, hit me up, especially if you need a, especially if you need a Cinderella or Joanna or Rapunzel. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just glad to have, I'm just glad to have, these are just, you know, good for me to have as just a fan of these shows and of Sondheim. And also, I know Merrily We Roll Along's coming to, Bro to Broadway. That would be great to see, but also Sweeney Todd coming to Broadway. Ah, yeah, I once saw this uh, production of Sweeney Todd in like a black box theater. It was a very intimate production, but it was really good. And that was my first and only time seeing Sweeney Todd live. But yeah, and by the way, um, 
uh, the uh, I didn't see her, but uh, the actress who is the uh, Christine alternate on Bro on Broadway right now, who goes like I believe like Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday matinees. She does Wednesday evenings because I did saw the Wednesday matinee show. But I saw Emily, who was the you know the full time Christine. She was, and I really loved her. I loved the acting choices she made as Christine. But Julia Udeen, who has played Christine in the past on Broadway, I saw her when she was on tour back in 2014. I went with Owen and we saw her. So just when I opened the program, I noticed she was the alternate. I was like, oh my god, I'm almost tempted to go back to, just to see her. We'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, I just like, I don't know, this year I have just re remembered how much I love musicals and and going to live theater so i'm like oh no now i want to go back all the time which is of course really bad for my wallet like it's bad enough <laughs> like it's bad enough i have a lot of books speaking of which i do intend on filming a bookshelf tour eventually for the library that's down here at my grandparents house because um i'll now think i've shared i might have talked about it on the podcast before but my christmas present from my dad and brother was over here at my grandparents house where i do a lot of work for bookish babbles and occasionally have filmed a couple videos i'm not really good at filming videos for youtube clearly um they built a library that's like right over here um i don't have my tripod with me i really need to utilize that more i keep leaving it at my house i need to bring it over here um but the uh bookshelf but um so i'm using my the phone's on my bookshelf right now guys but they built me bookshelves for christmas so i have a really nice library down here and this is just my happy place so I do want to film a tour because I'm just putting the finishing touches on like how exactly I want to decorate it, how I'm organizing everything. And I of course have like little knickknacks that I like to put on, on shelves. Like I'm the person who likes to put, you know, like my jewelry, my Funko Pops, especially on bookshelves. Like I have more Funko Pops at my house, by the way, for my uh, job, because I work because I work full-time at an office now, I did get Funko Pop bobbleheads of Ahsoka and Rey because I've been really into, I've like been in a huge Star Wars mood lately, which I haven't been in in years. Like, I don't know, I just re-fell in love with Star Wars last year. And I love Rey, obviously. I named my dog after her and um, watched Clone Wars for the first time last year. And I, of course, fell in love with Ahsoka Tano. Like, I wish I watched Clone Wars sooner and that I grew, grew up with her. I'm just kind of rambling now. Um, maybe I'll just do more vlog stuff uh, throughout the weekend just because I barely got any footage of New York, but it's fine. I've done other New York vlogs before when I went with uh, Maddie last September. Right now it's Friday night. I am a loser who just hangs out with her grandparents on <laughs> Friday night. And I'm just working on bookish babble stuff. I gotta write up all my notes for this week's episode. And because they're going to be very devastating chapters. Because spoiler alert, we're talking about um, when Finnick and Prim die. I didn't plan this out well. Um, I basically at the beginning was just like, oh, I'll talk about three chapters at a time when I started doing this show. And I'm like, that works because, you know, three feels like a good number to me. And it just so happens that this is the week where we have to cover both Finnick's death and like the last chapter we're talking about, chapter 24, literally ends with Prim getting blown up. So I'm like, well, fuck me. I gotta, I get to cover all the emotional damage. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm going crazy. It's fine, guys. It's fine. But yeah, I I have reawakened. But yeah, this week has reawakened my love for Phantom of the Opera, and I feel like I'll rant about it more on my TikToks because I have a lot. I've been having a lot of thoughts recently. But anyway, uh, I should probably get back to work. Uh, tomorrow's exciting. I'm hanging out with Sarah again. Um, we're going to this giant used bookstore that, that she found out about on TikTok that turns out it's only like an hour away from where I live. So where she and I are getting together tomorrow and we're going to go to that bookstore because giant bookstore or giant, and it sells a bunch of used books too. So obviously gotta, gotta check it out. And like, and like I said, I have a library now. So there's that. By the way, I just barely started reading this book. Uh, ruinous fate um look at the inside cover of this i love it um yeah i've like read the prologue 
so many thoughts. I'm reading it for my book club. We're meeting on Valentine's Day because I am aggressively single. So of course I'm going to spend Valentine's Day uh, at a book at a book club. Um, but and hey, all the candy goes on sale the next day. So you know what? I'm thriving. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is, the, this is the other reason I haven't read Chain of Thorns yet. I'm still listening to the Chain of Iron audiobook. Uh, maybe I'll do a separate vlog. I've been thinking about vlogging my like um me reading Chain of Thorns for the first time because I know it's going to be a very special moment because like Clockwork Princess was a big deal for me it's like one of my favorite books ever and the Infernal Devices has stood as my favorite like Shadowhunter book who knows it could change I feel like I'm rambling now but yeah this I can't even like I I cannot explain how much I love The Last Hours it's the best hey guys we're now in the car it's the next day i could we just woke up a little while ago but it's fine it's fine um yeah we're gonna go pick up sarah so woo, more adventures look who i found hi friends it's sarah <laughs> hydrate before you dehydrate yep uh where are we going we are going to the used book superstore in burlington woo. i have no idea i forget if i mentioned that at any point earlier so thanks for the reminder we're doing it we get to drive yay yes. well you get to drive well i'm yeah you're helping though she she navigates i nav yeah. it's fun mm -hmm. anyway see you in a bit <laughs> see ya guys we made it Woo! only hit a few bumps in traffic on the way here <laughs> only a few only a few and some uh in unclear uh lane markings we weren't sure if the street was one or two lanes at some at one point everyone was confused but anyway it doesn't matter we're here Of course we end up here. <gasps> Hello, Sosman. Yes. I know. Our boys also. Leave our do go. My crew. Yes. Fell out of song worth its day. Coming to theaters this November. Mine. Shut up. Good morning, world. Sun. It's the next day. Um, I don't think I've shown you guys my phantom shirt yet, so this is what I slept in last night. Um, Sarah and I are gonna clean up the little mess we made down here, and then we'll show you the books we got. Mostly mine. Sarah just almost threw herself on the floor. And Sarah almost threw herself on the floor. It's going great. <laughs> I'll probably get some fun bloopers out of this. Yes, probably. Okay. 
Why does this bed have to be so tall? Like me tossing the blankets aside because I keep sitting on the bed. Okay, outside. fair enough. Okay, we're back. We cleaned up for the most part. As long as you don't look in the corner over there. It's scary back there. Yeah, we don't talk about that. What we are going to talk about are the books we got. Uh, Sarah, how many did you get? Three! I don't know how many I got. They gave me this box. A box. I had to hold the door for her on the way out. <laughs> listen, listen, I could be on drugs, guys. This is my addiction. It's fine. That and your stuffed animal problem. Yes, but we're not going to talk about that. We're not? Yeah. Uh, uh, except but we for have this Grogu. One. Yes, we have Grogu with us. He's going to help us with the, with the book haul. I want to see if we can get him to touch the ceiling when he's on top of the stack. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. That could be risky. Could be. I don't know. I don't think Mando wants us to give Grogu a concussion. He might come after us. Valid. Yeah. He says, don't worry, Mando. We'll protect Grogu. Anyway, so Grogu's going to be in the video. He's going to sit right there and stay upright, I hope. He is chilling. Yep. He is living his best life. Anyway, um, do you want to start? <laughs> sure. With my three books. Yeah, the Ignore the deodorant that I left over here. Also, say hi to Diana, everyone. Diana the water bottle. Yep. She's, she's gotten Allison through a lot. Mm-hmm. She's my unofficial co-host for Bookish Babbles. Anyway, book. So our first book is Sasha Masha by Agnes Berinsky. So I've had this on my wish list for forever, and it is a queer read about a um a young person who does not fit into the gender binary the way that they were assigned at birth it goes on the thing that they can't see yep they can't see oh yeah there's a little box. ledge back here don't worry you'll see books start piling up <laughs> next up we have the castaways by ellen hildebrand yeah what's this one about I read that when I was pretty young, like too young to be reading it. Mm -hmm. It's about a group of friends who all live on Nantucket and two of them turn up dead at a boating accident. Oh. I feel like my grandma either read this book or read a different book by this author because your mom has caught, has books of hers in the house. Too. Oh, okay. Them. Yeah. <clears throat> Hold on, I'm choking on nothing. Diana, <coughs> save me. Your mom tends to bring her books out during mm -hmm. uh, summer season. Yep. Because we spend at the ocean all the time. Yeah, because we spend more time at the beach in the ocean. Because summer is so much fun for reading. So is winter. Yes. Yep. And I remember you looking at that book when we first walked in. Yes, and I realized I couldn't leave without it. <laughs> yes. It's We Ride Upon Sticks by Quan Berry. Yeah. And look how pink it is. So pink. The hard copy is blue. Like that back panel. Oh, panel okay. Almost. Interesting. So mm -hmm. we have a group of girls from Danvers, Massachusetts. <laughs> so close to the land of the witch trials. Yep. And they want to have their team win state finals. So a little magic gets involved. Nice. Kind of matches my sweater. Yes. Anyway. It's more Pepto Bismol, though. Yeah. All right. Huh, how I'm, is it? I'm wearing my five seconds of summer shirt, yep. guys. Yeah, don't flash back to the book tag. Woo. Yeah, uh, one of the best, uh, most chaotic episodes because the audio stopped working on Sarah's end at one point. That was fun. Even though I made the tag. Yeah. Go check it out. <laughs> it's link, a great time. Yeah, li link link in the d d doobly doo. Bio. Bio. John Green. <laughs> Yes, I said, yeah. you pulled a John Green. Yes, I pulled a John Green because I couldn't remember what it's called because I'm used to saying show notes because of podcasting. But anyway, oh, Grog, I had to change. Grogu, I know you're less in the video now. Hold on. <laughs> okay, so let's see what I can pull out of the box first. Speaking of John Green, I'm pretty sure he recommended this book years ago. Uh, the Female of the Species because it's been on my wish list forever it was like five dollars so noise what's it about again uh give alex craft what give us the oh answer. yeah novel by Min by mindy uh mcgiggins and mcginnis 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 i i'm bad at pronouncing names 
but the all I need is the back on the book saying uh, Alex Kraft knows how to kill someone and she doesn't feel bad about it. That's it. That's all you need to know. Oops. <laughs> all right. And next is The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. Uh, Christina Lauren's either hit or miss for me because I really liked uh, Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. I loved In the Holidays. I did not really like the Unhoneymooners, which I know is an unpopular opinion. I remember you reading it. Yeah, I don't, I'm not even sure if I finished it, to be honest, guys. I don't remember. I remember you telling me the premise and being, yeah. like, not really amused. Yeah, I... Anyway, but I decided, what the heck, um... It's a, it's, it was a used book, so obviously this was discounted. And I'm like, you know what? It's kind of a pretty cover. Very Valentine's Day themed. Why not give a Christina Lauren book another chance? Because I have liked some of their books in the past. We're filming this two days before Valentine's Day, by the way. Yeah. I'm probably not going to get to this for Valentine's Day. Maybe at some point this month. Who knows? All right. Next is a... Is it just a classic? One of my favorite books from childhood. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Um, It is the like 50th anniversary edition with hold on let me find some they got colored illustrations in here guys and the pages are still so light i know like look at this it's the lamppost i don't get to see the lamppost oh sorry how no. dare she no you have to watch the video once it goes up <laughs> yeah. lamppost Woo! hold on i saw some other great pictures in here too oh mr thomas's house look see i showed her first nice. this time I'm too lazy to get up again, guys, to move the camera. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know how people do this professionally. I'm clearly not a professional. This is why I stick to podcasting. <laughs> Even that I'm barely professional in. She has a microphone now. Woo! I haven't set it up yet. But you have it. <laughs> I have That's it! Start. <laughs> anyway, thank you for the microphone, Sarah. You're welcome. Anyway, next book. Um, could not leave without this. Diana! Diana, meet Diana. <laughs> Diana, a tribute to the people's princess. Yes, because we all love Princess Diana. Yes. Yeah. Fun fact, I was born a few days after she died, so... Yeah. Oh, I got some nice, good pictures in here. Oh, look at the, the, the ski trip with her boys. And in case anyone's curious, uh, yes, we, uh, we love Harry and Meghan. Uh, they they moved out of the UK, so there are prince and princess now. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I say we add this one to the bottom of yeah, the Yeah, that's stack. probably a good idea. And you can pile the other ones on top of it. There we go. Because I really want to see how tall this stack is. Yep, okay. Uh, next one is A Hopeful Heart, Louisa May Alcott Before Little Woman by Deborah uh, Noyes. It's exactly what it sounds like. Book about Louisa May Alcott. I love little women, as we know. So I could not leave without this. I almost pointed it out to you and then I realized you were going to find it on your own and I <laughs> let it happen. <laughs> nice. I did, however, run this next book to you. Yes, you did. Which is related. Yep. Belittled Women. Belittled Women. By Amanda Sellett. Um, little Women Retelling. What more do I need? She has so many Little Women retellings. I love Little Women, guys. And and Anne of Green Gables, as we all know. Oh, we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> I should have started with the hardcovers first, because it's like, I need to keep... Would you like me to rearrange the rest of the box? No, it's fine. <laughs> Alright, next is one Sarah, po again, pointed out to me, because it's one of her favorite books growing up. A Sarah Dessen book. Someone Like You. Yeah. Because why not? And it was like three dollars. Yes. Yep. Because you know, when one of your best friends tells you, "Hey, this was one of my favorite books growing up," you obviously have to get it. It's also like the only book I remember reading when we were kids that included teen pregnancy. Really? Okay, I did not know that. I didn't look at the synopsis at all, guys. I just took, I just trusted Sarah's judgment. I walked up to her and said, "Hey, I loved this when I was younger," and she went, "Okay, mine." And it <laughs> went in the cart. Yeah, we had a shopping cart, as you probably saw in footage. I got footage of the shopping cart. Shopping cart. Yes. So, if you ever want to go somewhere with uh, where you need a shopping cart at a bookstore, there you go. Apparently, there are two locations. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's next? Ooh, this one. Um, 
Black Buck, a novel by Matteo. Oh, I should have looked up how to pronounce this author's name before we started. Ascarapor? I tried. We tried, everyone. Um, what it? I already forget what's it, what it's about. Um, for fans of Sorry to Bother You and The Wolf of Wall Street, a blazing satirical debut novel about a young man giving a shot at stardom as the lone black salesman at a mysterious cult-like and wildly successful startup where nothing is as it seems. Yeah, someone who's worked in sales before. I'm intrigued. I remember when this book was really big. Yeah, I somehow missed that. Like, it was a book of the month pick. It was mm -hmm. a reading with Jenna pick from oh, yeah. the corner of your book there. Yeah. I remember people, like, racing to get this book. Mm -hmm. And speaking of book, speaking of book of the month, we saw a lot of donated copies of book of the month editions of books. Uh, here's, I think this was the first one I picked up when we went to the I store. So. Yeah, but what's mine and yours by uh, Naima Coaster. The cover is beautiful, by the way. Oh, and it kind of continues on the back. Look at this. Uh, what's this one about again? Uh. Oh, yeah, segregation into high schools, because, you know, <laughs> people had strong opinions when it's like, oh, no, the white children have to interact with the black children. Whatever shall we do? How dare. Yeah. How dare. How dare the black children want good education? How dare our world still be so segregated? Yay. Anyway. All right. How, how many more books tells Taller Than Grogu? I'm going to say four. Okay, cool. All right, next is a book I almost got a bunch of times when I was in high school, but never did. And now it was like five ninety eight, so why not? Uh, I love this book. Yeah, um, this star won't go won't go out. Um, by Esther Earl, with her parents Lori and Wayne Earl. Yep, with introduction by John Green. She is the girl who inspired *The Fault in Our Stars*, which is one of our favorite books ever. And um, the Vlog Brothers have Esther Day every year. That's true. In August, that's for Esther. Yeah. It's a day to spread kindness and love. Yeah. So, just a reminder: this book is, exists, everyone, because I almost forgot. Like a bad person. It's really good. It's really heartfelt. I haven't read it in years, but it sticks with you. Yeah. Hold on, I have an idea. Can I read the quote off the back? Of course. Just be happy, and if you can't be happy, do things that make you happy. Or do nothing with the people that make you happy. Esther Earl. There. This looks ex ex aesthetic. 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 Yay. All right. Uh, speaking of authors I grew up loving, um, got a book from the Rick Riordan Presents series, A Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. That was my grandfather's voice. Anyway. Um... I didn't look too much at the synopsis. A uh, seventh grader goes on adventure with mythological creatures. That's all I needed to know. That and I feel like you will read just about anything that Rick Riordan puts his stamp of approval on. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> I've learned some things in the years I've known Allison. Yeah, she, she's endured many uh, rants from me. My hair's caught my glasses, it's fine. All right, and in theme of the intention of this vlog, just me going to see Phantom of the Opera, I got a Phantom of the Opera retelling. <laughs> uh, Rose Blood by A.G. Howard. Um, Rune, Rune's voice has been compared to that of an angel and has a mysterious affliction linked to her talent that leaves her sick and drained at the end of each performance. Uh, convinced that the creative direction will cure her, Rune's mother ships her off to a French boarding school. For the arts at a renovated opera house rumored to have ties to the Phantom of the Opera. There's more, but I'll stop reading after that. Not the Phantom. Yeah. The Phantom of the Opera. He's there. Right. Don't crush your ears, Grogu. <laughs> Child must be unharmed. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and lastly, see, it's not that bad, but... I do have a series in here. Let's see if we can get them in order. Yeah. That's two. This yep. is one. Yep. Hold on. I gotta do it this way. Let's remove the bomb. Okay. Wait. Haha, -ha, we can get in now. Get in frame. Look, get in frame. And Grogu's still there. 
Okay, yes. this is a classic YA trilogy from when we were in high, in high school, and it has since gotten a reprint, but I got but they were selling the entire trilogy in the original edition, so I'm like, dang, this is a series I met, was on my radar forever that I never got. So how can I how can I pass up the opportunity now? The Grave Mercy trilogy. Wait a second, you're missing a book. What? Oh my god! <laughs> It's another, it's a book that's been reprinted and she found a first edition, yeah. that's why I remembered. Thank you, I would have forgotten. Um, but, we'll get to that one in a second. But yeah, the Great Mercy trilogy, basically, um, this one becomes an assassin. This was coming out around the time uh, Throne of Glass first came out and got really big, so unfortunately this series kind of got swept under the rug. I never even heard of it. Really? Never heard of it. Okay, we were on different corners of booktube, clearly. Yes. <laughs> yep. But I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, or it's called His Fair Assassin Trilogy, um, each book kind of focuses on a different main character. So this one obviously focuses on this girl, and then, I don't know her name, and then this girl, don't know her name either, and then this girl, also don't know her name. She kind of looks like Legolas, though. Can't complain about that. Can't tell what her name is because the sticker's in the way. It was five ninety eight. Yeah. Oh, well. They're in pretty good condition, too, by the way. Yes. So, can't complain about that. Well, thank you. All right. Ugh. Stay. Okay, and the last book that I now have to get up for. Oh, no, not getting up. Ugh, I know. It's a real pain. But you were so excited when you uh, found this. Oh, my God. I think I screamed when I found this. So, it's the first edition of one of my favorite books. Unwind by Neil Schusterman. Neil, he's got he's pop. He got very popular recently because of the Sights trilogy, and rightfully so. That series is incredible. I'm actually looking at it on your shelf. Yeah, it's over there. That's why I'm looking over her head. It's because I can see all of Neil's books. Yeah, so this is gonna go on the Neil Schusterman shelf, obviously, and eventually, you guys will see a bookshelf tour down here because it's a pretty cool space down here. I'm gonna have to help with that video too. You're not getting rid of me yet. No. We're, we're, all of us, we're stuck, we're stuck with this one. <laughs> but, but yeah, this, I think this was like his first book that ever got big around the time we were in middle school. Hold on, when is it published? Looking up copyright date. This book I do remember hearing about. Yeah. So we were on different corners. 2007. Okay, we were in like fourth grade. Oh, seven. Yeah. I was in third grade because I'm a year younger than you. No, no, we graduated in the same class though. You graduated in 16? Yeah. Weird. I know. Because my the way my school district worked, it was this weird thing where I was supposed to be born at the end of August. And had I been born at the end of August, I would have been in the class of 2015. But because I was technically born a few days after September, despite taking some kindergarten classes in preschool that could have allowed me to just get straight to first grade from preschool. The district was still like, you know, I was just still technically at, born after September because my birthday is September 4th. So hence why we're still in the same graduating class. I'm just the old lady of our graduating class. I was like the youngest of mine. Yeah, you're the baby. Truly. I think I had like one friend younger than me. Yeah. But you're, um, you're the baby, but you're still the mom friend somehow. Yes. But 07... Yeah, 07. This is, book is a throwback, but yeah, one of my favorite books. Um, very dark, because, you know, parents can just sell their children to be unwound, you know, die, and have their body parts sold. So yeah, Ugh. these are the books we got. Four books until it was taller than Grogu. Woohoo! Good job, Grogu. Anyway, um, I still have my pajamas, but that's okay. Uh, we'll... We'll wrap up the book haul here. No idea when I'm going to end the vlog, but I'll wrap it up at some point, guys. Yeah, because what are we going to do today? I have no idea. We need to figure that out. Well, actually, I have a ton of notes to catch up on so we can chill out. Yeah. So I never officially ended this vlog. Whoops. Um, But yeah, like it's like a week later or over a week since it even started. So that was a good time to end it, I think, because I'm editing it right now. And I'm about to record a... Uh, book tag episode for bookish babbles because I I need a little more time to prepare for this um, next episode because it's like the last chapters of Mockingjay and I want to give them a little more time because I want to do them justice like they deserve you know at least above average effort but if you're still watching this seriously thank you um, and um, you know 
subscribe, like, all that good stuff. I don't know. I don't know how to be a YouTuber. <laughs> But seriously, thank you. I had I had a lot of fun. And um, for anyone who's uh, near Burlington, I hope I gave you a good uh, place to go to. And see Fan of the Opera if you can. Bye.